Okay, so the first class is really introducing the concepts of adaptive music and the technology that is involved in musical games. Uh, so um, it has um, basically two sections. It has the introduction uh, about what is the concept of adaptive music with, uh, with some questions about it, uh, a timeline and evolution of the technology. This timeline, uh, you know, once you go through this uh, in interview in the overview, in the introduction, you will already get some idea of the timeline. It's actually covered in that video as well. But here, I kind of like go again a little bit more in depth into the technology uh, as it developed or as it evolved with the games and how it changed the music. So these are the two reading materials. This is just a reference to the book. And uh, your practical part will be actually starting to learn uh, the LMMS. So the sequencer, what it is, what is a digital audio workstation and installing this, because this will be your tool for the assignment. So let me briefly go and review uh, these, two for, these two sections or sub-modules. So what is, what is adaptive music, okay? Adaptive music is something that changes dynamically as you know, the situations or the scenes in the game change. So you kind of read and kind of go more slowly through this. But I just want to point out that it happens also in other uh, non-game situations. In the theater, uh, the sound designer might need to trigger sound of sound events and also maybe change that atmosphere, so-called jigetic or non-jigetic music, uh, according to the acting. And the acting has its own timing. You know, I'm not talking about improvisation theater, theater where things are even more free, but even in normal theater where things are scripted they're not necessarily timed perfectly, or maybe you can actually change and have music adaptive. So uh, circus also, you know, acts are, are, are timed and maybe kind of rehearsed, but still you might want to have some fillers. You might wait for, you know, an acrobat to jump through something or make a drop or anything so you have a drum roll or you have some kind of a loop going on until something happens so you have to be synchronized so even here you have already elements of adaptive music and music that has to be responsive to something outside of the music um, so uh, we talk about the difference between interactive and adaptive music and i provide a couple of videos actually there are like these two videos that i would like you to watch and there are some questions about them uh, now what these videos show are basically some of the adaptive techniques. Uh, one of the most powerful one and the adaptive, the middleware that I mentioned, Elias, uh, really focuses on so-called vertical, oh, sorry, this is vertical remixing. The Elias, uh, yeah, this is the Elias does the remixing or the, or the blending thing. Then there is this other technique, horizontal resequencing that another software like F-Mode uh, is more like using this technique, although uh, even though the names are different, uh, they're very much related. You can achieve the same musical result practically with both. It's just a question of how you organize and how you think about this. So what is vertical remixing? Well, in vertical remixing, the idea is that you have a lot of different musical segments that can be actually fade in, not only fade in and fade out in a sequence, but they can be played together. Uh, think about them as layering them together. So, um, so this video actually shows how different types of music fade in and fade out. Let me see if in my screen sharing I shared also the audio. Okay. So your task will be when you read this material actually to go and, and notice how different techniques are related to different scenes. So for instance, I'll play briefly through this video. Okay, if you start, we have some kind of opening music, right? So, uh, so this is scripted. Scripted means that it's actually uh, it's pre-composed. This is actually a, a, a non-dynamic. It's 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 a fixed music. It gives you the atmosphere, uh, and it does not depend on your controls. But then as you go on, you might add in and out also some sound effects. The wind does the 
but then as you go in and you start changing locations, you start having different types of music mix in and mix out. So follow these instructions. Look, look at what the video says. Listen to the music of some explanations here. Okay. And then, as you keep on going, it shows some examples of effects. What happens as you go in and out? What happens if you get to a battle scene? Let's go a little bit farther. So read these instructions to see actually how they explain what happens to the music and listen to this a couple of times. This is why it's best if you do this on your own. Really take the time, go ahead and forth. So they have these transitions and stingers that start being very dynamic. Okay? So the vertical remixing here is really using the idea that uh, the music, I mean, there are of course different segments and different scenes, so the music changes, but within the scene, many times, and there is also one segment there where the music is totally generated by the computer, so there is a generative aspect. Uh, but in the vertical remixing, especially in, you know, when he goes through the town or he goes into the, into this house and starts shooting, uh, there are layers being added you know, they fade in and fade out. And basically it's the same music, but something something happens to it. Like more of that music happens, it becomes more intense or less intense. And without kind of requiring any kind of musical terminology and identifying if this is, you know, the, the drum loop that stays or the bass or the chords or the melody, we'll talk about all of that. But right now you just kind of notice that kind of the, the, that flash that, you know, whatever the substance of music kind of becomes a little more transparent or more dense without the music kind of changing the theme. It's not a different scene. It's not a different atmosphere. It's kind of the same, uh, the same idea, but becoming either more dense or, 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 or stronger or, or adding more elements uh, to that music or reducing from them. So you kind of like add and subtract from, from the music materials by using vertical remixing. In horizontal resequencing, if you switch between clips. So in this example, you will actually have some, some ideas of going back and forth from one side of the river with one type of music. And now when he moves to a different side, the music will start changing. You hear the dark music comes in. And then when he will come back, something else is added. So again, this could be done also by layering. But in this case, there's actually different types of music that go back and forth. They're pre-composed loops. And then when you move from one side to another one, now the first one came, comes back. See that kind of this melody, that, that flute, and this kind of a transparent and you know, sad but peaceful melody goes in. And only then, when he moves to the other side, it basically goes into a different type of music. So. Uh, so here things were already stacked together. I mean, there is no, like, even though maybe uh, the way it was composed was adding like this bass or adding the deep music, but the principle itself was going back and forth uh, between pre-composed musics and changing them. So this is why it's called horizontal resequencing. You think about the dynamic music here as basically having uh, one pre-composed soundtrack with some markers and then you can go back and forth and switch smoothly. Of course, you crossfade, you make it very smooth, but you don't have to play it from beginning to end because you don't know where this bird is going to you know, move uh, in your game. So uh, check this out. Then I talk about some musical examples, which are non-game. This is an example of a dance, interactive dance, another one, movement generated basically with sensors and a piano. So this is maybe, was it more, more radical, where the movement of the dancer uh, Okay, and uh, my own small example of an improvisation. This is a dynamic 
uh, or machine improvisation situation where I improvise on the piano and, so, and the composer, so uh, sorry, and the computer actually plays a lot of other materials. I'm doing very little. I'm triggering really the, the, the computer sounds as, as me playing a few melodies, a few chords, and everything else is actually the, the, the computer being able to generate sounds in a dynamic way from, uh, this one is based on a piece by, um, um, by uh, Stravinsky, the Rite of Springs. Uh, that the computer kind of like analyzed and had as a model that now he can improvise on and I'm triggering these improvisations. So um, these are kind of examples of dynamic music or adaptive music, which is non-game based. And this is uh, our introduction to adaptive music. The second part really di dives into specific like technology of games because games started with um, you know, very simple sound chips, this way called chip in music, and evolve into full orchestral scores. So here are a few examples of music, basically the classics, the Mario Brothers and the Legend of Zelda uh, for different versions of the game. So your task here would be to listen to these videos and um, in a free response, basically describe what happened I and mean, how the music changed uh, most of it is really the same classical, you know, Mario song, Mario theme. Uh, actually, in one of the Mario like, games, they tried to use another music and then they came back to the original theme. But the, something happens, it becomes more dynamic, the instrument changed, becomes actually from synthetic chip to music to orchestral music or, or live music. So I want you kind of to notice this and go through this timeline and just tell me your impression. This is also another example like this in Zelda. So if you go through these uh, videos, they're fun videos, uh, and just take some notes and that will be your second question is basically technology music timeline of evolution without really us yet knowing what was behind, what was the ex exact technology, but kind of just by listening to the music itself and experiencing it, maybe get some idea of how it evolved from electronic beeps to full orchestral scores. Uh, so this is your reading assignment for, for this module. And um, the practical thing is really going and installing the sequencer, talking about the DAW. So when I come back, um, I'll go through this. You can kind of read this. It's really just telling you where to go and what to install. But I, I would like to talk to this about this or be more of a help, a uh, hands-on session. Um, um, yeah, All right. uh, we said now it's almost 12. So um, yeah, take 10 minutes break, have another uh, you know, hour session with yourself, try to do or at least review some of the reading materials, see uh, if you understand the quizzes, uh, complete them later on. But mostly maybe you can try to install and see if, if you are set up with, with the software. So um, kind of make yourself an efficient use of this hour. Uh, and of course, you don't have to come back at, uh, at one o'clock. And my only section will be, you know, the regular one will be the 11 o'clock when I do the introductions. Uh, I guess next time it will be slightly shorter uh, because today we kind of went through a lot of materials. I'll just talk about the materials for that uh, for that class uh, and then be available uh, for the help session uh, from one o'clock. Uh, I'll stop the recording at this point, take some more questions and um, yeah, and let's see. Okay.